What's going on, Wolfpack fam? It's your boy Kid back at it again with some more chewing the fat season one. We're still still on season one episode. This one is episode five, guys. So let's get it. Let's do this. <coughs> oh, please sit down. Cheers, Mr. Um... Kelso. 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 Yes. Now, Mr. Kelso, I have your file in front of me, and it says you've been claiming benefit for 11 years. And in that time, you've never had any offer of employment. That's right, yeah. Also says your preferred occupation is poet. <laughs> poet. <laughs> you see, this is why the DSS is reviewing your case, Mr. Kelso, because of this poet thing. What? It's an awful long time to be claiming benefit. Yeah. And you've kind of boxed yourself into a corner by saying you're a poet, because... I I'm a poet. Well, I'm, I'm not saying you're not a poet. I'm just saying that by being a poet, you've precluded yourself from other work. What do you want me to do about that? <laughs> what kind of stuff do you write? What do you mean, what kind of stuff do I write? Well, I mean, you've never been published. Have you ever considered that might be a factor? <laughs> what are you driving at here? That my stuff's not good enough? Is that what you're saying? My stuff's not good enough? <laughs> Can I hear one of them? Right. I'm going to hear my notepad here. Tell you what he's got. A distant smash ruled over by the drone of Danny's hammer. What's it called? Uh, the worker. It's <laughs> ironic, isn't it? Hey. <laughs> Nothing, go on. <laughs> I just got it right now. I'm a little slow on the intake right now. Oh, shit. <laughs> a distant smash ruled over by the drone of Danny's hammer, pounding squarely, callous thumbs, glazed eyes. Miles from home amidst an industry mayhem, awaits the bell that tolls dinner. Cheese again. <laughs> that shit is shite. Well, that's <laughs> garbage, isn't it? I beg your pardon? Well, it's mints. It's hardly buns, is it? It's not meant to be buns. I've got one for you. Eleven years on a downward spiral. What's it called? <laughs> Kelso's fate. <laughs> <laughs> that's ironic, isn't it? No, it isn't. <laughs> Eleven years on a downward spiral. Every Thursday, cash the gyro. DSS don't think it's funny. They decide to cut your money. All your work wrapped in a parcel. Get a job, you work shy asshole. <laughs> He's a better poet than he is, shit. You freaking asshole. And they take DSS took his money. Hi there. Hi. What's that you're eating? Muesli. What's that plate of goodness you got there, Forty? Full fried breakfast, just like I have every morning. What's muesli? Full fried breakfast. Eh? You're a braver man than me. Don't start about the dieting. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You're doing well, too, I must say. And I'm losing weight. You are, you are. I'm working on the premise, right, that you breakfast like a king, lunch like a prince, supper like a papa. No. Oh. Okay. That's not the breakfast of a king. That's the breakfast of a crazy super king. With a big kingdom. Mm. A mad king. Anyway, for the rest of the day, right, mm -hmm. I won't consume any more than 3,000 calories. What will you eat? Oxo cubes. You can eat as many as you like. You're going to stuff yourself with oxo cubes all day? <laughs> <laughs> 15 each. Poor. You'll be Jesus. beefy breath. Yeah, that's the downside, but there you go. No kissing for you. No. Nope. So <laughs> no you're going to calorie burning? Ah, well, you see, that's the thing. Mm -hmm. You can burn 1,000 calories, right, from one session of sex. Where'd you read that? Never mind where I read it. It's just a well-known fact. Come on, that's some statistic you picked up. Where'd you get? You have to have a girl that likes you, man. Come on! Hey, from? The hello. Wait. What if you like me? Uh, what if you like me friends? See, me friends only last two or three minutes. Uh huh. Do you burn, burn a thousand calories that way? No, two or three minutes means two or three calories. It's just the way it is. So you got to be a sixty-minute man to burn that thousand calorie. Ah, uh, here's the thing. What if you can't have sex? Mmm. Viagra. <laughs> oh, Viagra. You'd lose a few pounds with that, eh? Yeah, you'd lose eighty thousand calories in a night. What a session that would be. 20 stones down, eh? Be a skinny little thing with a big head, but you'd be a love machine. Uh, do you think you can overdose on Viagra? Mm, I don't know. I guess it'd be fairly easy to spot the guy in the morgue who had OD'd on Viagra. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've never been in a coffin. Oh, <laughs> shit. I've the guy's face with a hammer. <laughs>
Dude, Viagra is no joke. We had one co-worker. He was like 65, 66 years old. When he took Viagra, he would miss three days of work. Because this shit would not go down. I don't know what kind of medicine, uh, how many pills or whatever. But that shit was no joke. That's crazy shit. Hey, I'm sorry I'm late. You're <laughs> this not late, fucking early. deep voice, motherfucker. Oh, hey, right, well, I'll just wait outside and you can give me a shout and you're ready for don't, me. Don't, don't, don't be so silly. Come in and sit down. Right. Name? Hey, Ronald Villiers. Ronald oh, Villiers, who are you with? Hey, why do you come and pump? Okay, <laughs> now, you know what we're doing here today, Ronald? Uh, hey, yes, I think I've got a rough idea, yes. Okay, yeah, we're doing a voice. I, I, you don't have to tell me. I've done my homework on this one now. It's a movie trailer voice. I've been practising the voice all weekend. Oh, great, that's that's fantastic. Yeah, it's a movie trailer for an actioner. Oh, and it stars action uh, movie. Patrick and Don Swayze. Don Swayze. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, we've also got Brian Dennehy in it. He's the oh, cop. Brian Dennehy. Aye. Yeah. I've been told I, I look like a thinner version of Brian Dennehy. My sister <laughs> said that. It seriously <laughs> scares me. Oh, yeah, yeah, I could... Uh, I could... Uh, I could uh, <clears throat> okay, just have a look here at the, uh, the monitor right. here. And you'll see the movie trailer that's going to come on there in a few seconds. Right. And there'll be no sound to it. Uh, you just supply the script there. It's just to give oh, you an idea how long right. the voiceover oh, has to right. be. Right, okay then. Okay. Well, that is started, look. Yeah, yeah, okay. There you'll see... Uh, the brother's coming out of the prison oh, at State Pen. There's Brian coming out of the precinct. Oh, aye, aye. There's like a train me, crash. Like there, huh? yeah, there's the bar fight. Mm -hmm. There's Brian again oh, on the rooftop. Right, uh. Then we do a couple of seconds on the bomb. A oh, oh. little bit of a car chase. Oh. Car turns that sounds over. a good movie. Yeah. Titles. Oh, that good movie. fabulous, that. What a job you've done. I'd like to see that myself. <laughs> you ready to have a go at it, uh, Donald? Oh, hey, hey, Ronald. Failures. Sure. Right, yeah. yes, yeah. I am. Uh -huh. Okay. 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 Off you go. Jack and Kate is whoa, 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 whoa. Just, just let the numbers count <laughs> down right, there, right. okay? Just three. Jack, Jack and <laughs> What the fuck? <laughs> oh, shit, this guy cracks me up. Jack and Kate is having a very bad day, and is about to get a whole lot worse. Okay, hold on there, hold on. Have you uh, ever <clears throat> seen a movie trailer before? Oh, of course I have, yes. Okay, it's just we need the voice to be a little grittier. Right, grittier. You know, a little more sort right. of gruff. I'm good at gruff and gritty, yes. Are you? Oh, I, yeah. oh I've done that. Okay, right. <laughs> you want to have another go? Sure. Okay, mm -hmm. all right. Jack Kincaid is having a very bad day. <laughs> Whoop. Well, hold on a minute. Just give me the script there for a second. Jesus, Don't man. You, what, you want a glass of water or something? I'm all right. Okay, right. Now listen to this. Jack Kincaid is having a very bad day. Yeah? <sighs> Beautiful. Uh, you're brilliant. Uh, ah, you know that. That's great. Beautiful right. job. Right. Okay, right. ready to go? Okay. Off you go. Right. Jack Kincaid is having a really bad day. Deeper. But Jack Kincaid is having a really bad day. Deeper. Jack Kincaid is having a really bad day. Jeez. Deeper. Jack Kincaid is having a... <laughs> Imagine hearing that shit like that on a trailer. Jack Kincaid is having a really bad day. Should scare me. Day. Jack Kincaid. <laughs> That shit would Thanks, scare me. Donald. Toronto. A Glasgow shipyard, 1958. Oh, yeah. Alright, take it away, Charlie. Oh, Charlie. Oh, shit. I was about to say, I would not be sitting there. <laughs> 40 years coma? Well, Alway. Well, Gentlemen, oh, boys. you were in a shipyard accident. You've both been in a coma for over 40 years. I have been in a coma. But we're all right, eh? Well, bizarrely, you seem okay. Oh. We're all right. Well, we're all right. We're thinking of ourselves, eh? Right? Get my boots. Well, Pat Willie, I'm joking for a jar. Oh. Jesus! Oh shit! It also remind me real quick uh, of Popeye the Sailor Man. I don't know why. Started thinking about Popeye the Sailor. Arr! Oh shit! Oh, what have you got in your hand? Have you been stealing money Snickers out of that kitchenette again? No. Well, open your horn. I'm going up the stair. You got no, your hand on me? I'm going up the stair. 
I have tried with you, son. I really have tried with you. What is it you want? Is it a visit to the big house you want? The big house with the wee windies, is it? No stolen anything. Well, that's what they all say, eh? That's what they all say in the big house when they get the chance to talk in between the buggerns and all the rest of it. <laughs> Open your hand. No. You want me to lift that phone up? Is that what you want me to do? You want me to phone the business? You like doing the cop shop right now? You'll not be able to walk. I'm not going to the big house. I've not stolen anything. Oi! Don't give me any of cheek. Is that what you're doing? You answer me back. If you have any idea what happens to you... Yeah, he better not give him any more cheek, man. Who's answer the that back? Go to the big house. That's right, they end up in the jug, the clinker, the slammer. Shawshank without the redemption. Shawshank oh, redemption. If you watched our, our, our last video, with, let me show... What is that, guys? Never heard of that. I'll put the night in all, eh? Aye. Aye, you be your big Mick Baker pals to tear the tune up. No, it's school prize given. I won the English prize. You won the English prize? Oh, son. It's beautiful. Oh, they think a son of mine could win the English prize. I'm not proud. It's nothing da. It makes it all of mere unbearable to think That's of beautiful. you lying in some urinal somewhere, bare ass naked with a blood <laughs> running at you. Is that everything for you, madam? That's everything, yes. That's oh, people's shit. friend and 20 Peter Stuyvesant. No Caesar today, then? Sorry? Not buying dog food today. Usually buy dog food on a Tuesday. Ooh. Yes, well, I'm afraid I won't be buying dog food anymore. Oh, why is that? Because little Binky passed away. No! Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Were you very fond of little Binky? Oh, why? Yeah. What kind of dog was he? A Scottish terrier. Oh, I'm so sorry about that. Scottish Terrier. I wish I had a wee Scottish Terrier in here sometimes to keep me company. I'm in here on my own, you know, every day, day after day after day. But <laughs> who's Binky all you had in the world then? Well, no. Actually, I have three sons. Oh, they come round and visit me regularly with my grandchildren. Oh, so are they coming round today then? Uh, not today, no. So you're going to be all on your lonesome, eh? Listen, here's an idea. Why don't I just shut the shop for a couple hours, eh? I'll, I'll get some numbari and some milks and some French francis, a couple of individual trifles, and I'll come round to yours and we'll make a day of it, eh? We'll have, we'll have tea and cakes. What about that, then? And we could chat. And <laughs> you could show me some pictures of your grandkids. What do you think? I forgot. My sons are coming round this evening. <laughs> oh, well, that's even better. I could meet them. May I just pay for my shopping, please? <laughs> uh, yes. Must be that sad to be that lonely. Imagine that, guys. If you take a second and think, man, how lonely someone could be like that. Just want to invite themselves. There. And there's people out like that. It makes me cry. That's three pound sixty-five, yeah. please. Did ya? Hey, but where about your change? Keep your change. <laughs> she just want to get the hell out of there. Sunday stop coming round one day, you know. <laughs> Having too much fun to visit old mum. I'll still be here. <laughs> Somebody took a bite of that shit. Here, have a scratch of that. Oh, your jaw's ah, on the Yeah, I thought pizzas were for three. Maybe they got a fancy pizza pot out the back. Ah. <laughs> hey, they look crazy. Peaceful. Two balls, iron brew. What? Listen, doll, we're not going deep sea diving. Uh, who do you think we are? Hans and Molly Hass. <laughs> they look fucking oh. crazy. Jesus. Uh, you're Tommy. Billy. Jimmy. I'm Mark. Mark, that's right. How are you, Mark? I'm, I'm fine. How's yourself? Oh, I'm Gallus. Now, is it the fuller can of your wanting, a crystal ball reading, or you can have the skull? A skull? What, what's that? You, you read my skull? No, oh, I've got a skull. A rather special skull. Mm. Well, I'll go for the skull, eh? Skull too bad extra. All right, who's that? Ten. Aye, that'll do. Right, <laughs> I just want to sit back, relax, and I shall reveal the skull. There you are. This is the skull Ooh. of the Marquis de Sade. What? The Marquis de Sade. Young fella, you know, invented sadism. I was a bad man. You can read the future a lot better for the skull of a bastard than you can for a good guy. Jeez. Tenina Shepard does a Gallagher. She's got a skull of Pol Pot. She's booked up to July. Mind you, she's just got it in for Cambodia, so it's still needing bailed to get all the muck off it. Bailed? Ah, you've got to bail it to get the hair and the ears and the eyes off. It's a manky job. <laughs> right. I'm seeing the initial M. 
That'll be me, Mark. Oh, well, we're off to a good start. <laughs> I'm seeing a garden, the wains in it, and a man cooking, like, cooking outside, you know? What, you mean like a barbecue? That's right, like a barbecue. What do you want me to say? I don't know. <laughs> barbecue. She don't know I'm shit. Not a barbecue. Right, well, you'll be going to one soon. Uh, I see the name Mary. No, I don't know anybody called Mary. Margaret? <laughs> maybe, no, it's Maisie. Or maybe it's Irene. No. <laughs> she don't know, know shit. Heather? No. <laughs> she gonna go down the whole list. I see a man with big, dirty horns, working horns. Your dad, maybe? No, no, but my dad. My dad's a chartered accountant. With dirty horns? <laughs> no. Seeing a blue car. I don't know anybody with a blue car. She's just but saying Sheena, good. Jenny, Anne-Marie. No. Right, Linda, Andrea, Heather. No. You said Heather already. Is there a Heather? No. Right. Heather. Um, <laughs> Surely can't be the, the skull of the marquee de Sade. <laughs> Too wee. Ah, but this is the skull of the Marquis de Sade when he was a wee boy. <laughs> <laughs> she is the worst fortune something reader I've ever seen in my life. Do you guys believe in fortune telling or any of that stuff? Um, the only thing I kind of look at sometimes is like horoscopes, but what you guys think on that? This random question just popped up in my head. Well, be us, darling. Right, but listen, Arr. don't go in any trouble, sweetheart. All right, we'll wait for the mail, Bob. No, come on, I'll get you a shampoo anyway. No, 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 no. No ice. I washed mine this month. Can you not smell the carbolic? I know only time I've ever got my heat in the sink has been up spewing up my ring. Well, I think you would feel the benefit for it. Well, it doesn't it matter, because here's the male hairdresser, new hire care. Oh, oh my shit, my boy! Oh, just what I love. A pair of blank canvases screaming out for a makeover. Yeah. <laughs> it's all the same with yourself, Kevin. We've, uh, we've changed what minds. Uh, this place seems a wee bit overpricey for us anyway. Oh, come on. I remember for that price, not only does Kevin cut your hair, but I get you a blow dry as well. Is that a fact now? <laughs> <laughs> the blow dry is included in the price. Much, brother. That sounds well. One will get fired in amongst that. Aye, as long as that boy Kevin isn't dishing out the blow dry. <laughs> you guys think what I'm thinking? <laughs> now it's time to rejoin Joan at the Janan Review blow dry. as the holiday season approaches and tensions mount in Largs Uncovered. It's <laughs> 9 a.m. Joan makes everything ship shape for the arrival of the B&B's new guests. Well, I've got three rooms completely booked out for the weekend. So I'm quite relieved about that. It's the first weekend of the season. I've got uh, Mr. Dawson and his niece. Um, they've been coming here every year for the last two years, this year. Uh, an elderly couple, Mr. and Mrs. Carson. Uh, they've been coming here every year, for, oh, even since the previous owners were running it. And uh, I've got the blind fella, Jim. He's just lost his mother, so I've moved him into a single. It's, uh, he lives here all year round. Pussy, pussy, pussy. Oh, excuse me. The towels are folded, the sheets are washed, and the Carsons arrive. Joan is a big believer in public relations and always greets the guests at the door. Oh, hello, Mr. and Mrs. Carson. Nice to see you again. Hey. Uh, you're both looking well. Hey, key. Oh, yeah, right, there's your key, Will. <laughs> Enjoy your stay. Joan is uptight, as her husband Andrew has been drinking and is monopolising the living room. Well, I'm actually a bit uptight. It's my husband Andrew. He's been drinking again. And he's monopolising that living room. He's got just stars in her eyes. My husband doesn't always drink. Just in the holiday season. Oh, no! Get my <laughs> back! <laughs> it's his idea to open my B&B, but after the first year, I couldn't get my lift a finger. Excuse me, why is it Mr. Dorsey? Oh, uh, right, yes. Um, um, my niece is having a nap at the moment. I was just wondering if it was all right to come down and watch some television. Uh, Andrew's in there, Mr. Dorsey. Oh, right, I'll, uh, I'll just leave it, thanks. Just go back upstairs. Oh, tell me, will you be changing the sheets in the morning? Oh, Dorsey! I know what you're up to with that niece! Huh? Who comes to your B&B with a 22-year-old niece? You dirty, clotty gay! Shut it, Andrew! Ach! Holy shit. The following morning, the house is quiet. Andrew works off his hangover by preparing the breakfast. Oh, yeah. 
Ah. Ah. While Joan seats the guests. Right, come on now, Jim. Blind or no, you can. You have to be down here for quarter to six. Sorry, Joan. <laughs> it's my new room. Couldn't find my cupboard to get my clays. Oh, I'll let you off at this time. At least you've cleaned your teeth. Right, Mr and Mrs Carson, is it the full breakfast? Uh, full. Oh, Joan. Where's that Dorsey pervert? For God's sake, how can you leave it? Dorsey, you filthy shagger! <laughs> Get off the bones you can do here for your breakfast! Or it's gone in a bin! <laughs> it's 11 a.m. Oh, Mr. Shit. Dorsey and his niece have yet to surface. What are Andrew's they doing, guys? Oh, oh boy. Oh boy. Dorsey! Open that door! Are you taking the bus? Dorsey! Either way, I'm putting this in! Jesus! <laughs> Tragedy has struck. Both Mr. Dorsey and his niece lie dead. Joan is upset. Oh, I'm gutted. I'm gutted. I booked him for a week. Thought it was a sex doll for a second. Jesus. What's it moving? When you're older, Shame you on me. Nice to have a permanent income to rely on, even although you haven't organized a personal pension. Well, with Home Free, you can have all the benefits of a personal pension without any of the planning. If you own the house you live in, and the house is worth £70,000 or more, and you have little or no mortgage to speak of, then Home Free will release part or indeed all of the equity in your property, giving you a carefree pension to spend on whatever you want, whenever you want, Ooh. and live in the house for the rest of your life. There's no difficult forms to fill in, and no salesman's going to call. Here's how it works. If you live to say the ripe old age of 95, then you have us humped. <laughs> but if you should get sick before then, which will probably happen, shit, then you... Home Free will do their utmost to snatch your property from underneath you. Oh, and then shit. forget all about your sad old wrinkly ass. Jesus! <laughs> home Free, where well, hopefully we can that. get your home for free. <laughs> Ah, oh, shit. OK, Betty, let's go past the ward now to the time of rationing. Tell me, what are your memories? Well, it was a good time to be living. <laughs> we felt we'd come out of a bad period, you know, a dark period. Everybody was happy, even though there was rationing. It must have been very hard for you to try and feed and clothe your family and, indeed, keep them all together. Tell me, how many children did you have? Eleven. N nine be different fathers and two be my Charlie. <laughs> Uh, yes, quite, but you, you did manage to get food on the table. Aye, well, I just sell my ration book because me and my pal Rose could get as much meat and stuff as we wanted. From the yes. black market? No, out the shops. <laughs> it you sounds kinky. Take Cochrane's, for example. See, I used to get cheese out of Cochrane's, and in them days, cheese came in big, huge chunks, like the size of a puffy. Uh, and with your ration <laughs> book, you were only allowed two ounces. I came to an arrangement with a man that worked in the shop. Oh, shit. He says to me if I went in the back and dropped him and, and let him rattle me in the back, <laughs> I could take him as much as I could claw. Oh, shit. T tell us about the bananas. Oh. She got rattled, all right. Oh, n n never, never mind the bananas. <laughs> there was the butchers, you know. I'm just a young lad worked in the butcher, so he was a good ten years younger than me. He just looked like a boy. My, what a size. <laughs> Because I hung a duffel coat on it with two bottles of iron brew in the pockets. Please. Sometimes I was in there for hours. Oh, what a boy. One day I even come up the road without the meat. Just please. Jesus. <laughs> now, your husband Charlie she cracks me home, up. Home to his family. Look at her face. Tell us what it was like to have him back. Oh, it was garbage. Six <laughs> years he'd been away and that was him back under my feet making a nuisance himself. See, he was bad me after what the Japs had done to him. I wish the Japs had kept him. The bamboo, the bamboo, he used to shout out during the night. He was bedridden for a year. Oh, that's terrible. He's bedridden for a year? Aye, it was, cos it meant if I wanted a plunge, I couldn't use the bed. I had to go outside and use the shed. <laughs> oh, shit. I like those sketches Charlie, that she does did there. Did you get the stuff? Oh, wouldn't you like to know Jimmy boy? Come on, Charlie. Did you get the stuff? Aye, I go to us in the bag. Woo! What's in there? What's this? I told you to get the stuff. And I did. I got the stuff. 
This is the supermarket zone brand ravioli. I only like the good gear. I only like the Butoni gear. Oh, the Butoni gear. That's right, the decent ravioli. The nice Italian canned ravioli. No, that's fish. That's my ravioli. Don't you slag my ravioli. Don't ever slag my ravioli. If you check the bag properly, Jimmy, you'll find your own precious ravioli. What? Underneath the tin peaches, Jimmy. Oh. Well, that's all right, then. <laughs> Damn, he snapped on him for nothing. For nothing. Here, Jack, you want to hang fire and I'll go first. Ah, uh, OK, I don't mind. I'll stand and wait here. Are you sure now? Because ah, I don't mind waiting if you want to go first, you know. Oh, that's all right. Give yourself peace. I'll just stand here. Away you go. Well, it's just I might be a wee while, you see. I've got to ask about my super Anne. Uh, well, that's what to do. Away you go. For I'll goodness wait. sake, will one of you make up your mind? There's a queue here. Hey. Oh, hmm. my, so there is. Uh, it was quiet a minute ago. Well, away you go, Victor, on you go. You sure now, Jack? I am all right. I'll wait here. I don't let her rush you, by the way. Hello <laughs> there, Barry. How's your cell, eh? Not bad, Mr. McDade. How are you? Aye, no bad, no bad. We bit chesty there, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah, you're off of brown now. Is that you back your holidays? Aye, Tenerife. For goodness smashing. sake! Oh, Tenerife, eh? Oh. <laughs> what are you? <laughs> That's what happens, though, on lines and stuff. People get impatient as fuck, guys. It happens quite a few times. People be fighting and shit because they be like, "Come on, hurry the freak up!" You know, everybody gets impatient on that shit. Uh, it get it get crazy. It get crazy. Some of us are in a hurry. Oh well, some of us aren't it? You want to calm your jets? My pal's only up there doing a wee bit of bank business. As a bank, for God's sake. Tell him, fam. Dancing and all that. A couple of pints. I was there there twenty odd years ago before that big crash. You know. Now, the other thing I want to ask you about is uh, a money order to Canada, you see, because my grand man, he's 12 now, you know, and, uh, well, he's an office size. You want to see the size here, you know. Well, I'm going to send him a wee bit of money there. That's a ridiculous. That. Oh, Why don't you button your lip? Absolutely. It's not her fault there's only one bloody teller on, eh? What's the matter, Jack? Oh, I'm telling this woman it's not her fault there's only one teller on. I've got a right nippy sweetie here. Now, the other thing as well is a standard Snappy. order, you see, for my home help. Uh, I, I wish to, to make that. a complaint here. Uh, Aye, so do I, but the bloody cheek this one's gaining me. <laughs> this pensioner's caught for it all the time, so we do, eh? Because we take a wee bit longer to complete our transactions, eh? We've got to take a lot of tripe off the high and mighty types like you. Well, I've had enough, it stops right here. Shut your trap and stop your bleating, you sow. <laughs> Damn! Ask me now, Jack. Oh, shit. Oh, Holy shit. Hello. No. You shut her up. Oh, God. <laughs> this is in ones and twos. I've not put them in bags or anything like that. I've not counted it. Oh, boy. Holy shit. They're going to be pissed. Ah, you can't even eat Saturday at the football, eh? Swaying about the terraces, firing into a few pale ales, and then pushing into the car. I am not wrong. Ah, that's absolutely brilliant, isn't it? What about Oh, boy. Where are they at? Where are they at? Yeah, feasty murder. Where's your charger? Sorry, lads. I'm going to have to confiscate that drink. What? <laughs> Hold on. We'll scalp them. Ah, let me think now. Ooh, eight cans. I'll take us two minutes. And before we go any further, may I remind you that drinking in public is also illegal. What? <laughs> right, Elliot Ness. Take the baby. Aye, take it. And away against peace to watch the rest of the game. Come on, Nero! Holy shit. As is brandishing an offensive weapon in football grounds. What? <laughs> can we tell this next we can't even sing a sash? Can we still cheer the kick off, aye? If you've got a ticket. What? Ticket for the football? It's no the Charlie Ah we're going to see. Never you tell me you're going my ticket to go to see the football on a Saturday. Aye, and I'll do you any good today. Who's that? Because Saturday's game kicks off Monday evening, 7.45. What? <laughs> oh, another show. Another end oh, of show. Shit. Jumpers. And I can't help but notice, Forty, that uh, a calm has befallen the flat. The cat seems to have stopped scratching. Where's oh, the cat? Well, there's a reason for that. You buy it a scratching post? No, no. Some mooks might have bought it a scratching post, mm -hmm. but I thought, no. What? Scratch cards. Oh, genius, genius. Yeah. I scratch mean, cards? Well, that's the most useful thing a cat could do for you, scratch your little scratch cards for you. Oh, man, that saves you the bother of going into your pocket to get the pound out. Well, exactly, because pounds sometimes don't work. Sometimes you've got to get the one pence or the two pence, and it's a real hassle, so I thought, let the cat do it. So you've killed two cats with one card. Exactly, but oh, there's geez. a downside. What's that? Well, sometimes it scratches off the wee void box as well. There's another downside. What? There's some money missing out of my wallet. You blaming me? No, fella. My wallet's your wallet. Right. I think the cat is nipping in with its little paw to my wallet and nipping down to the shop to get scratch cards. 
Are you suggesting this cat's got a scratch card habit? I'm suggesting that cat is addicted to scratch cards. <laughs> what the hell? What the hell? Oh, shit! Here. You seen that chew in a fat part? I'm trying to go that part of man. What is this part of part of part of total part of? That's what I was back, man. Just part of part of. <laughs> oh, jinx! These are handy things, easy. Aye, when she's finished, Gina's were blow dry. She can come up here and wash the clabber off her bunnets. <laughs> Get a good blow dry, guys. Woo! Okay. Have you ever seen your granny making water down by the old mill stream? She pushes for an hour and a quarter and you can't see her ass for steam. <laughs> <laughs> She's one of my favorite characters in, in, in this show right here, at least right now. That was episode five, guys. What did you think? What was your favorite part? I like the uh, hotel uh, scene. Uh, that should have me dying. What was your favorite part, guys? You let me know. As always, guys, I appreciate each and every one of you guys. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for hanging out with us. Um, really appreciate you guys. You guys are the freaking best. Don't you forget that, boys and girls. Um, I love you guys to pieces. Um, another good episode. We're gonna. I know that you guys said that uh, season one is okay, but you know it's gonna get better on the second season. So we we're working our way up through that. Um, we got more still game ahead. More Ricky Gervais show. We definitely will continue the uh, Lemmy show. We'll keep keep going with some of these shows that we got. Um, and as we wrap up new shows, eventually, you know, we'll we'll add more new shows into the mix as long as it's uh, a flick, you know, we're we're able to do so. So, guys, thank you so much. Love you guys. See you soon. Peace and love. Peace. Mm -hmm.